So welcome to yet another episode of HVACR Verse. I'm your host, Kevin Stiles, and it doesn't change. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how a reversing valve actually operates. How does it actually work internally? I have a reversing valve back over there that's cut open. Don't worry. No reversing valve was harmed in the making of this video. This was a truly bad reversing valve. I diagnosed it myself and I have a video that we're going to play and watch of how I came to the conclusion that the reversing valve was actually bad. Now, I know a lot of times technicians will misdiagnose reversing valves, and it's because they don't have a true understanding of how that reversing valve actually works. I've seen technicians diagnose bad reversing valves because it's a bad compressor. Don't ask me how that happens, but I guess it happens. So, I'm going to play the video of how I came to the conclusion that it was the reversing valve that was defective, not the actual solenoid coil for the reversing valve. And then we're going to look at the internals of a reversing valve so everyone can see how they actually operate and perform. If you think that a reversing valve works off of a mythical unicorn, guess what? <laughs> You're wrong. Because... A reversing valve works off of a pressure differential off of those little capillary tubes that you see on there. And I'm going to show how that all works. But let's first watch the video of how I came to the conclusion that this reversing valve sitting back over here is actually truly bad. So let's go to that video. Testing operation of reversing valve. Took fan off to make coil get super cold to make sure it switches over correctly. Coil temperature is dropping. test on the defrost. Reversing valve is, does have power, did not shift. I'm gonna put a magnet on it, see if I can get it to shift. Reversing valve will not shift. I'm going to put it in cooling. I have system in cooling mode manually, bypassing to be not in heating. I have a magnet on the reversing valve, and it is still not going into cooling. It is still putting discharge into the indoor coil for heating. Reversing valve is not shifting. Reversing valve is bad. This is the insides of a reversing valve. So you have your shuttle, which is this whole assembly right here, and then this little copper piece right here. This is what connects the true suction to whatever port the suction is gonna be in. Then your discharge flows through here, through the body, and in this current position would flow out this pipe right here. Now, when this reversing valve shifts over this shuttle, now this is still your true suction, so now the suction would be going through here, and then the discharge would just flow straight, and there's an opening inside here to come down right there. So in the instance of right here, move this light a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see. This would be its normal position with the solenoid de-energized. I have a switch hooked up to energize this solenoid coil. And that would be energized. So we're gonna apply nitrogen so currently, gotta hook up the nitrogen 
to do that. So what I did was I disconnected the capillary tube off the discharge and just put a tap, access tap on there so we can do this. So currently in this position, I don't know if you can hear that in the video, but it's coming through right there. When I energize it, now the hot gas will be pushing against this diaphragm and then this would become a low pressure situation and it would shift it this way. And now the pressure is coming out through here through a little capillary tube. And then vice versa, turn it off, it would shift it back this way. The hot gas would push, high pressure discharge would push against this way. This side would become a low pressure because it would tap into the common, your true suction. Now, in this instance, we can take this off. We don't have power applied to this anymore. And if you wanted to test to see if you had a weak solenoid coil, you could take a magnet and do the same thing. And I'm out of nitrogen now. But this would act as our solenoid coil. Now let's see how this operates off of those pressure switches. Sorry, I didn't mean pressure switches, but the capillary tubes. So in here, we have our discharge right here, which would feed into this solenoid body. Now, in the current position that it's in right now, which would be, this would be heating for this reversing valve, you have your common suction right here, or your true suction, allowing the suction gas to flow through here off of this port, which is creating this side into a low pressure situation to allow the bellow to slide that way. Now, when it's de-energized, your high pressure discharge is being pushed over to here, which is pushing against this, which has a nylon seat that allows it to push over that way and seal against the body. Now, when we energize this, we put our magnet on, it would, if the pressure changed, it would push it this way because now our discharge gas would be flowing from here through this pipe into the bellow over here, pushing high pressure over here. And then now this would be tapped into the low pressure side on our true suction, putting this side under a lower pressure situation. And due to that pressure differential, this whole shuttle can slide over. Now, it might be kind of hard to see in there and I'm gonna see if I can get the light to zoom in on this. It's hard to see it, but you can kind of see the shuttle in there. You can definitely see all the way through, which would allow this discharge to flow through right there. Now when this shuttle moves over, you can see through right there as well. And this is allowing the discharge gas to go this way. This is how a reversing valve operates. So hope this helps. So I hope this helps the younger technicians and the technicians that understood kind of how a reversing valve works, but can actually visually see how a reversing valve works and how the internals work in conjunction with the solenoid. A lot of guys think, or gals, sorry, like to think that the actual solenoid coil is what moves that reversing valve. All that solenoid coil is moving another shuttle needle and moving the ports around, as you saw in the video. I hope this helps. And if you like what you see on the channel, like, subscribe, and keep on HVACing on. If you like this video or any of the other videos, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and as usual, happy HVACing.